Okay, we're ready to move on to turn number five. In the previous round, Alyssa was defeated by the gargoyle, so she's knocked out, she's dead. We're down to zero hit points. So the way the game works is that you have two healing surge tokens that you can use when you're knocked out. And I have three here because the rules do state that if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, you can go ahead and use a third one. So I keep the third one available just in case, but, you know, I try to play through the adventure without using any healing surge tokens. But, uh, so I guess you can consider it like a grading scale. If you can get through it with no healing surges, you get an A. If you use one, you get a B. If you use two, you get a C. And if you use three healing surge tokens, you get like a, a C minus, you know, you, you pass, but just barely. And if you use any more than that, you're cheating according to the rules. <laughs> so we're going to have to use one of our healing surge tokens just to get up and continue the adventure. So we pick Alyssa up. So she's uh, revived. And according to her player card, uh, when she uses a Surge token, she comes back with four hit points. Sure would be nice if we could get, you know, at least five or six. I guess we can't really expect the full health back again. But uh, four seems just uh, really low. I don't think we're going to make it uh, through the... I don't think we're going to make it to the secret stairwell. But we'll put down our four hit points that we have and we will continue on. So, Alyssa is adjacent to the Gargoyle, which means we can use our Careful Attack to do one damage guarantee. We could throw some Holy Water on it, but I don't see any point in doing that, because once you use that, it's gone. And this lets you do it uh, from an entire tile away, so if we're just going to do one damage, we'll just do the Careful Attack. We can do the Hit and Run which allows us to uh, gamble, essentially, which didn't pay off last time. If we gamble again and it doesn't pay off, then obviously we would have been better off just using our careful attack last turn, our careful attack this turn, the gargoyle would be dead. But of course, you know, you can't know how the dice are going to land. So we're gonna, I think I'm going to go ahead and gamble again and really hope that I get some dice rolls like the monsters are getting. <laughs> so here we go. We're gambling. We're going to attack. Ugh, did not pay off. We got a four. So that's very unfortunate. We would have been better off pinging for one last turn, pinging for one this turn. The gargoyle would be gone and this nightmare would be over. We attacked, we missed, so it says uh, we can move if we want. Boy, is that unfortunate. Um, just thinking, I have a movement speed of six. So one thing about the gargoyle is that if you are more than one tile away, it doesn't do anything. So one thing we could do is, uh, it, again, we, we attacked, we missed, but it says even if you miss, you can still move anywhere on the tile you want. So I could move us here, and then I could say we move one, two, three, four, five, six, basically right back where we started. That'll put us more than one tile away from the gargoyle, which means the gargoyle will not pursue us. And at this point, I feel like that's probably the way to go. I don't know if I want to burn another turn trying to take out this gargoyle. So we attacked the gargoyle, we missed, but the hit and run allows us to move ourselves anywhere on the tile we want. It doesn't say you can only move two places or whatever, it's just on any square on the tile. So we're going to move Alyssa to this square, and maybe we should have done this last time, but you know, I was hoping the dice would, uh, would work in our favor, but they didn't. So now we're going to, we attacked, now we're going to move. We can move six squares. So we're going to move one, 
two, three, four, five. And again, we don't have to be on an, unex on an unexplored edge. But since we have the movement, we'll go ahead and move here. That gets us more than one tile away from the, uh, from the gargoyle because one tile away would be here, here, here. And of course, it wouldn't be back here because there's, this is a wall. So the gargoyle will not pursue us. So we don't get a crack at a treasure chart, a uh, treasure card. We are exploring. So we'll go ahead and grab a dungeon tile. It's a black tile, which means we have an encounter, but uh, for this particular adventure, that's not the worst thing in the world because, you know, again, if the time tracker moves up to five, then Strata wakes, uh, wakes up. Now, another thing I'll mention about this strategy that's not the greatest strategy is that notice that we're all the way back where we started. Normally, with the Escape the Tomb, you want to go literally in a straight line and put as many tiles as you can between you and the starting tile as possible. Because when Strahd wakes up, he moves two tiles at a time. And the farther you are away, the better off you are. So coming all the way back down here, right where we started, is, is not a great thing to do, but... We'll see how it works. So we got a black tile. Uh, we got to place a monster on the tile. Watch us draw another a gargoyle. That'd be about right, wouldn't it? It's a skeleton. So we bring out the skeleton, place it on the bone pile. And we do have a forced encounter because we got a black triangle. So now we draw an encounter and we don't have enough experience to cancel it. So it is what it is. Oh boy. Traps are bad. Let me set that down, set this down and read it. Traps are bad. So we got a, a spear gauntlet. Spears pop out of the ground skewering you. Place the Spear Gauntlet marker on the active hero's tile. If that tile already has a marker, discard this card and draw a new encounter card. You trigger the trap during your villain phase. Attack each hero within one tile of this trap. Oh man, these things are terrible. Ugh, I hate traps. I, I would absolutely cancel this if I had the experience, but I don't. So we go into this pile of tokens, and we look for the Spear Gauntlet. Last one. So we take this and we place it down on our tile. And... So we have the encounter, there is no villain, but the uh, the trap fires right away. It doesn't say, it doesn't wait till next turn. <laughs> so we trigger the trap during our villain phase and we attack each hero within one tile of the trap. And it's a plus six uh, and, and it does damage even if it misses. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> So we roll up the dice and hope we get low. And that's a six. So, what is the plus? So it's plus six. Actually, it's just right here. Plus six. So six and six is 12. So it misses. Yay. Oh, wait. It still does damage. But one damage is um, better. than three, so at least we're still alive. So the the uh, the trap activated, and now we have a gargoyle on the map, and we have a skeleton on the map. Luckily, we're far enough away from the gargoyle that we don't really have to worry about it, but it still technically activates each turn. So I guess we don't actually need this card. I think I'll set it aside over here just in case I need to look at it again. But I think all the information we need is right here. 
Actually, though, it does say on the very bottom that you can try to disable the trap instead of, uh, instead of attacking. So we'll see what we decide to do. So the gargoyle activates, but it's far enough away so the gargoyle does nothing. That's good. Now the skeleton activates. If the skeleton is adjacent to the hero, and it's not, so we skip that and we go to the next one. If the hero is within one tile of, uh, if the skeleton is within one tile of a hero, which it is, then it's going to move adjacent to the closest hero and attack with a charging slice. So we're going to say the skeleton moves uh, here and attacks with the charging slice. Now, normally when monsters move, they move from one bone pile to the next. Um, technically, our bone pile is covered up by the trap, so we're just going to place the we're going to place the monster here. Also, it has to be adjacent, so I don't even know. Yeah, I guess it would still be adjacent if it was there, but um, it, the adjacency is the most important thing here. So the skeleton's going to attack, and it's going to use as the slice, I believe. Yeah, the slice, which is not good because it uh, it does even more damage than the than the attack if it were right next to us, and it has a plus nine, so let's see how we roll. Not uh, 12, and 12 and nine is definitely enough to hit, so Alyssa is hit for two more, and I don't think we're gonna get out of this dungeon. So Alyssa's down to one point of health, and it's just in a whole world of hurt. So, going into turn six, we have all kinds of stuff to deal with, so. That'll be the end of turn five, and come back for turn six and see how it plays out.